Hello, this is Haku Devin, and today we're going to be reading some Rules Horror. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get right into this. We're still trying to pick some stories. I think that should be enough for one day. <sighs> the cake is a lie. The people are a lie. The friends you made here are lying. The room is a lie. This cursed hotel is a lie. Nothing here is what you think. The only thing you can trust is the black writing on the white note. Currently, I am writing this in a critical state. The ink flowing out of my pen like my own blood flowing out of the absent chunk in my leg where flesh is supposed to be. I don't have much time left. The creature ate my leg. That ate my leg is getting hungrier. My hope is that this has reached the right person who happens to be in the same shoes I find myself in. This set of rules is to help you survive and live another day in the, on the face of the earth. Please, you won't do it for yourself. Do it for me. Please, by the time you read this note, I will be dead. One, room service will bring you... Ooh, it'll look like the best looking cake in the world. Pink, sugary, and thick, and sweet in all the red places. Topped with the reddest strawberries, sprinkled with powdered sugar. It is the best cake the world can offer, but please, for the love of God, don't eat it. I'm not completely sure, but I came to the conclusion that this, that the cake attracts a creature that ate my leg. He's getting hungrier as I write. Two, people you find roaming the halls of this wretched hotel are nothing but a figment of your imagination. I don't sugarcoat anything, so I will be straightforward with you. This hotel has been gassed, poisoned, what you see, the grand staircase and the fine cuisine, and the hotel offers any elegant chandelier hanging from the foyer, from the foyer ceiling is fake. It's all an illusion. The staircase is a normal wooden flight of stairs, covered in moss, mud, mildew, and overrun by bugs. The food is nothing but sloth, a beige brown color, the texture of oatmeal mixed with grits. The chandelier is the worst of all. A middle aged man hangs in a place, and a light bulb occupying both of his hands and horrifically placed in his mouth. They all work. Two roaming the halls are the same corpses that walks. I find myself in this situation because I happen to be immune. If you find this, you are too. The creature has to try harder for you to be its sinner, and he will lure the thing that roams the hotel to try and end you. Three, the friends you made here are a lie. They are millions of the creature that is ready to kill and eat me, used to track you and leak your locations to the creature or creatures. I don't know how many there are. Four, the room you booked is a total lie. The luxury beds, lamps, and showers are lies. The beds are old, moldy, and stained with blood and urine. They are also infested with bed bugs and termites. Sleep as if nothing is wrong. The mistake I made was that I looked disgusted, which made the creature hungry and angry, leading my leg to be an appetizer. The showers are molded and yellow, and the soap is an un unidentifiable brown. They can liquid. It with a slight tint of red. You said as if nothing is wrong. It stinks, and I believe you have a honey allergy. If you have a honey allergy, you'll break out in cold sweat, accompanied by the itchiest hives you will ever have. 5. The whole hotel is a, is a lie. Nothing is real. Get out while you still can. Check the door now. Uh, is it burning hot? Open it. It will lead straight outside. Lead. If it is at regular temperatures, try again in 30 minutes. If you are still alive by then, it, if it is freezing cold, it's too late. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself or you'll wake up immortal. There's one way to escape if the handle is cold. You must call to... 
and demand he send an angel to, down to protect you. If you say this, you will feel a wave of calm wash over you and you will no longer be panicking. That means there is an angel with you. Now open the door. There will be a void. Jump in. You will awaken in your bed restarting the day. You can only do this if you have already given your life to him. If you are an atheist, get ready to endure the worst, worst possible death anyone has ever experienced. Please get out of here. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for me. Don't let me die in vain. Good luck. <sighs> Just gonna move on. I literally told him to. Sorry, where were we? Oh yeah. Welcome to my garden. Are you really already dreaming? No, you find yourself in the garden. Beautiful trees and bushes surrounding you, each contain the most flawless looking fruits of marvelous varieties. You see a young woman picking apples in the distance. The grass is soft beneath your feet. As you make your way over, you notice the air saturated with a translucent veil of pink mist. The woman turns to look at you and smiles before handing you a note. Confused, you try to ask where you are, but she has already turned away and ventured beyond on your limited vision. Puzzled, you begin to read the note. Welcome to my garden. I've worked here my whole life, and I've always maintained the proper diet. Ensure you do as well, and I promise you nothing but bliss. Each fruit is meant for a specific person. Choose wisely, wisely or become the embodiment of your true nature. One, the apple is sweet with seeds of poison. Only eat if you yourself have a sweet exterior with darkness inside you. Two, prickly pears have horns on the outside, yet nurture those in the desert seeking refuge. This fruit is meant for those who seem rough but have a caring nature. Three, Oranges are full of tang through and through. If you are zesty, bold, and like to make your presence known, this is the fruit for you. 4. Pears are sweet and soft. Only those with a truly loving nature can consume these. 5. Bananas are artificially made and have lost a connection to their past. Those who are lost may eat to regain who you once were. 6. Dragon and fruits are named for the great beasts that once roamed this world. Only the strong and courageous may conquer it. 7. Grapes come in bunches. All are connected through a network of vines. Only those deeply embedded in their community may eat these. Intrigued, you put the note in your pocket and make your selection. After a brief hesitation, remembering the warning, you take a, you take a bite. The woman, now finished collecting her fruits, calmly walked through the peaceful garden. As she came across a pile of clothes, she sighed deeply. It's a shame humans are so blind. They almost never pick right. She reached under the pile of clothes and pulled out a handful of seeds of what would have been their correct fruit. They understand so many wonders, yet their biggest mystery is always themselves. I'm not sure what this is an introduction of, but ow, first of all, and secondly, I guess we'll find out. Introduction. What's it like dealing with hallucinations? <laughs> you might regret asking, but I'll tell you anyway. One thing, they don't, don't tell you even if you know that they aren't real. They can still hurt you. Something in your brain is so messed up that you can see things that aren't there. 
Do you really believe that same brain is incapable of causing phantom pains and other ailments? You get to meet lots of new friends. Friends who, ca who can't tell anyone your deepest fears or your darkest secrets. But you have to be careful. I would like to introduce you to my friends to help you understand better. Start with Dahlia. She never wears the same face, but is always a beautiful, ghostly little girl. She loves hide and seek. Whenever she appears, I just have a tendency to go missing. Or specifically, what you need when you need it. 1. Give up. You won't find it. 2. Every time she shows up, you must pay her a compliment. 3. Do not give her the same compliment two visits in a row. Write down if that helps. 4. Not following her rules will cause you severe paranoia. Seder. He only appears inside and has a teal aura. Being around him feels good, but you still can't trust him. One, as soon as you see him, you have to imagine an impenetrable bubble around you. It may be any color you wish. You must hold this image in your mind until he leaves. Two, if you have to sleep, hold the image until you sleep. Upon waking, you have two minutes to get the image and hold it again. Three, if he starts asking questions or if he does not have his aura, it is the white man. Do not answer his questions in this form. Four, breaking his rules will cause extreme nausea and vomiting to the point of dehydration. The white man, large white humanoid, you will only see his head at first because he likes to creep up on you. When referring to this creature, you will use him, it interchangeably. It claims to have no o gender, but prefers those too. 2. Never lie to him. He always knows. 3. Don't let him touch you. It causes searing pain. 4. Stay in the light. It may be natural or artificial. Five, failure to follow these rules will cause blackouts and memory loss. I think finally, the mute, a roughly 10 year old boy with his mouth shown shut. One, he will be with you for two days. Do not let him out of your sight for more than 60 seconds at a time. Two, it will be hard, but try not to sleep. No real consequences, but you'll have nightmares of being tortured the whole time. Three, breaking his rules. Makes you wake up with cuts. They aren't deadly. They aren't real. But they do hurt. If anyone appears between the hours of 4.17 to 6.17, abandon the rules. 1. Light a candle in the center of the room. 2. Hide well, but keep your candle, but keep the candle on your vision. 3. Snap your fingers twice each time one of them walks past the frame. Or, don't worry, if they show up between these times, they will stay for three hours at the longest. Not following these rules causes a complete breakdown of your reality, lasting several days. These are only a couple of my friends, but I think it's enough to show you what I and others like me struggle with every day. Any other questions? <sighs> Try to disable to have snoozing so this can be a little bit quicker. Maybe not. Here at Amber Peaks, we pride ourselves on natural beauty, tranquility, and most of all, the safety of our forests. During the daytime, these woodland areas are your ideal place for all things outdoors. 
However, some rules must be put in place for your convenience and security once the sun sets. 1. Keep the forest free of litter. You aren't the only ones spending the night here, you know. Our friends prefer their living space clean and tidy. After all, you're a visitor. They're already not too happy to have intruders around. 2. After hours last from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. If you're in the forest past 11 p.m., you've chosen to stay until the next morning. You will not be able to leave until 6 a.m. Please plan accordingly. Three, do not attempt to leave before 6 a.m. We mean it when we say we, you cannot leave. You'll turn around to see the gates locked shut. Vines and foliage will hold it tightly closed. Any conscious attempt to hop the fence, break the gate, and or disturb the foliage will result in mutilation, currently being the loss of the dominant hand. Is it really worth it? Four, come prepared. If you do not plan to stay after hours, but you find yourself in the forest close to that time due to reasons such as feeling drawn to the forest, not knowing where you were going, hearing a voice beckoning you closer, etc., etc., please ensure you have at least 100 grams of sea salt and a lighter on your person at all times while in the forest, just in case. 5. Stay aware of your surroundings. If you have chosen to take a walk after hours, please be aware of the hangers. They're clumsy and tend to fall from the trees, despite it only by a rope tied around their neck. They like to star you. They cannot do much, do you much harm themselves, but the screams they let out if you so much disgrace them or loud enough that you put yourself at risk of being seen. Stay cautious. Six, stay concealed. Well, our friends become aware of your presence the moment the clock strikes 11 p.m. Most of them agree to live alongside you for the night with little complaint. However, some are not as observant as the rest and will not notice you as easily. They are also a little less tolerant of visitors. If you experience any four or more of these symptoms, a sudden cold sweat, a tightness in the throat, the feeling of being watched, hallucinations, or whatever you believe the dark fears in, uh, in the corner of your eyes are, trembling, hearing muffled cries coming from behind, and unexplained sense of impending doom. They have seen you, and they are not happy. Please refer to the if they have seen you section of this booklet. We apologize in advance. Seven, keep quiet. I'm not sure why you'd think to go in the first place. The closest sign of life is the, the fishing shop half a mile away from the entrance to the forest, and they only open at 9 a.m. They won't hear you if you scream. Our friends will, though. Do not overstate. Do not overstay your welcome. Our friends are patient as long as you're respectful. They won't cause you much harm after hours, but once the clock strikes 6 a.m., they won't expect you to stay another night. They want you to. They won't want you to. They'll be less lenient the second time around, and less the third, and even less the fourth. You don't want them getting sick of you. If they have seen you, if you have experienced any four of these symptoms, and this is above, you have been spotted. Being caught by them bears one of two consequences. Either A, you become one of the hangers, or B, you are dismembered. Whatever it is, you give them a way out of the forest. Your family are next to meet your fate.
You only have you have only twenty seconds to follow these rules. One, find a stick on the ground. If you cannot find one on the path you are on, do not try to search for one in a darker, more wooded areas. No matter how desperate you are, there aren't any sticks there. You'll find something much worse. Once you've seen them, you'll wish you hadn't. Two, create a circle of salt around you. If you have if you had read the earlier rules, you should know oh, to keep one hundred grams of sea salt on your person at all times. The circle of salt may not be disturbed after the 20 seconds given. This leaves a clear gateway for more unpleasant things to reach you. At this point, the 20 seconds will be up. If rules 1 and 2 were followed correctly, you may continue at your own pace. But if they weren't, you'll know. And so will they. 3. Draw blood. I hope that stick you found is sharp enough. Take the stick you have collected and drive it into your hand, wrist, or calf. Continue until it bleeds. This will not be pleasant, but the things, things that spot you are hungry. At least they're not taking you whole. 4. Light a fire. Once your blood has evaporated from the wound, you may proceed with lighting the stick on fire using the lighter that you hopefully brought with you. For a Once lit, if the fire points to your right, you will stay completely still and silent. They are pleased with you thus far but they want to trick you into thinking they aren't there. To move is to aggravate them. To speak is to let them in. For B, if the fire points to your left, to your left they are still all hungry. Dig the stick fire side down into your thigh with no hesitation. Your pain will be enough to please them. If they aren't satisfied, they'll do it themselves. And much worse. You will send relight the stick once you your skin stuff upside out. Once you are safe, the fire will point upwards. Proceed with caution. Five. Leave. Once all, all the rules have been followed completely, your symptoms will dissipate. Do not leave the salt circle until you are assured your symptoms are gone and you are safe. You're giving yourself to them if you do. The gates of the forest will open for five minutes after closing again, despite the time being after or hours. They are feeding and therefore cannot keep the gate closed. Run! Get out! Once we're done feeding, they'll be back for seconds. Back for you. And no amount of puncture wounds you can give yourself will effectively satiate their hunger next time. I cannot say that word apparently. If you don't encounter them and did not leave early, but you've survived until 6 a.m. Congratulations! We suggest that you leave without looking back. Our friends can remember visitors' faces for up to two months. If you cause them more trouble than they'd have liked, your next stay here won't be so easy. Thank you for your patronage, and we apologize for any mental distress and or bodily mutilation you may have experienced over your night. If you have any complaints, please report them to our friend Tom. You can find him by stepping out of your salt circle prematurely. He shall see you out. Regards, the Amber Peaks Environmental Team. And here we have the last one. Cat sitting rules, because who doesn't love cats? Time is actually pretty good for now. Hello! I need a cat sitter for three and a half days while I am on a family vacation to San Antonio. If you're interested in this job, here are the rules. Number one, don't live near the uh, plants or blinds. He likes how plants taste and he always wears her blinds whenever he manages to get in them. Number two, give him treats whenever he stares at you. Eating. Make sure to put the treats on his orange dish on the ottoman. He gets upset when someone eats without him. Number three, my kitty baby boy can get a bit cranky in the mornings, especially when there's strangers around. So for your safety, please stay in the bedroom with the door closed until 11 p.m. when he's calmer. Number four, 
If he looks up at you near the air of an enemy house, that means he wants to look out the window. Please lift the blinds up and make sure to close them when he's jumped off the windowsill. The creatures will come in when he, no one's looking. Number five. If he starts hissing and clawing at the windows, that means a creature is approaching. If that happens, I'm going to take my cat away from the window and close the blinds. You may get a few scratches, but it's, both, but it's for both of your safety. If something... That, number six, if something seems off of my cat, leave the house to call me. There is a possibility that an entity is posing against my cat again. Make sure the entity doesn't get out of the house or else it will suck you and it may end you. Number seven. My cat is blind in one eye. If my cat has both his eyes, call the police, then call me. My neighbors have stolen my cat and replaced him with a nearly identical cat about three times over over the course of five years. And every time my cat has either come back home sick, injured, or with a large amount of blood missing. Number eight, during the night, if my cat is laying on your chest, keep your fingers on your wrist or, or neck to check if your pulse is slowing. The last time my cat lied on his, his cat to his chest, she woke up with a very weak pulse and low energy. She had to go to the AR and later died in the hospital. If you feel your pulse slowing down while my cat is laying on your chest, push him off. He'll be a bit miffed, but it's for your own safety. Number 9. If you see my cat staring at the ceiling, don't look up. I made a mistake when I woke up. It was the next... I made that mistake and when I woke up, it was the next week. My toenails were gone, someone shaved all my hair, I was covered in ants, leaves, and twigs, and I was 500 miles away from home. Not to mention, I was inside of a shed that had several jars of baby teeth and toenails. Number 10. No guests and no loud music. No guests because it might make my cat nervous, and no loud music because my other neighbor has a very fragile state of mind and she bangs on the door and screams at, at any neighbors playing loud music. Next door to shut up. If something bad may happen to you, my cat, or the house if she tears over the edge. Hmm. Number 11. If you hear someone knocking saying, it's me, name, tell them they have the wrong door. If they say they know me, they don't. All of my friends know that I'm on vacation, and no one in my extended family has any reason to visit my house. If they try jiggling the doorknob, get a cup of water, and splash it on them. If it's Jerry again, he'll leave, but if it's someone else, call the police. Number 12. At night, if you feel paws on my bed while my cat isn't in the room, don't panic. It's just the spirit of a cat I used to feed. Number 13. If you hear me outside of the door asking you to let me in, that is an entity posing as me. I have a key to the house. I can open the door myself. Do not let it in. Those are all the rules. If you're interested in this job, email me. Pay us $20 a day. That was r slash rules horror. I'm quite sure that you know that I, I, there was a new separate in my little sidebar thingy that I, I'm not sure if anyone is ever actually looking at. 
I'll be going there eventually again another time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!